No, I don't know how you feel, but I can support, I can relate, and I will try to understand. How many times have you wished you would hear that from somebody rather than somebody saying to you straight away when you've expressed and it's taken so much to get something off your chest or if you've gone through something or if you've been unwell or one of your loved ones or your friends are going through something and it's really stressing you out and you choose to confide in somebody and the first response you get is I know how you feel. Now I've had this a little bit lately and it's not necessarily frustrated me but I really really wish that somebody did know how I feel. Now, I chose, this all started in the last couple of days when I chose to confide in somebody in my workplace and actually one or two people who I work with just because I'm going through a few things health-wise in the background, which I've not been feeling particularly great. And as we all know, one of the great things of work is with the people who we work with and on that basis, how we can connect with them and how we can get things out in the open and we can generally talk because sometimes talking to somebody outside of the family in a way can be a little bit more helpful towards our well-being and how we're feeling because of course they're not emotionally attached they are on the outside and they can look at things in a way which perhaps family members parents grandparents close friends might not necessarily be able to and they can offer a little bit more of a different insight which i always find can be incredibly helpful so i done this anyway and uh, it was about it was three people who I told who I shared something with and this was because uh, I work in finance and I assist and manage uh, several elements of projects so it was becoming aware I've got appointments and things coming up I needed to confide I needed to plan ahead so I got a range of all different scenarios came back to me from this when I classed them as yes acquaintances but people who I've felt comfortable to talk with and people who I know have been through things so I would expect them to really understand and they've supported me great throughout my time in my role. So that having said, positive. However, the first response when you get from somebody and it really did give me kind of the grounds to make this clip because when somebody says to you, I know how you feel, I will always give somebody all the time in the world to support to listen and to really try to understand and try to relate but I will never say that I have 100% been in that person's shoes so I can't say exactly how that person feels but I can try to relate and not sympathy because that's not what people need but that mutual understanding that care and that time and that ability to try to relate which often helps rather than just someone saying, I know how you feel. Some people might need to hear that, but I know a lot of people wouldn't necessarily appreciate that in the right way. Now, in terms of health, of course, I understand it's completely different to maybe a different situation such as relationships or even sadly bereavement, which all of which, apart from the relationship issue, I have experienced. So, for example, issues where I've talked to about my parents and they've been able to use their life experience and, of course, their love and their care for me to be able to give me the insight and help and understanding. But when it comes to people who we don't necessarily expect it, it's almost a bit of a shock to me whenever I go through it. So, of course, I'm 30 years of age. I have unfortunately not been blessed with great health throughout my 20s. and I'm still dealing with issues. So I will talk to people. I will try to get people's view, people's insight, people's help in how to look at life and what avenue to take next. So, and I love to talk. I love to be there for people. And I also love to... I wouldn't say lean on somebody, but I like to get their insight on how I come across. Do I show that something's going on in the background? How am I coming across? Am I still delivering on what I set out to deliver? So all of those things. But I just find, isn't it incredible that how when somebody says, I know how you feel, and if you break that down, how on earth does somebody know how you feel? So in terms of whether that be if you've lost a loved one, then I understand. But they don't know personally how you feel. When we've been through a health journey or a health scare, that person doesn't know how you feel. Unless it's your parents, which is completely different, or your siblings or grandparents, put that to one side. But just in general nature, just in life, when we say to somebody, sometimes it takes just a little bit more thought, a little bit more consideration of how we approach that topic. 
And I think that starts right from just acknowledging that somebody who has chosen to share something with you, number one, I don't actually get this very often from people who I share this work or friends, that actually, do you know what? Number one, the acknowledgement that for someone to share something with you, number one, says a lot about your relationship with that person. It says a lot about how that person is in conversation and how they can be perceived and how they are treated, okay, and how they treat others. So, for example, if I wanted to share something with somebody, there's a few people who I know I could comfortably talk to. After the last couple of weeks, that's sadly narrowed down to a little bit less than that. But the whole point of this is me actually saying that, you know what, next time if you're in a situation and you hear, I know how you feel, I always say, before you can judge somebody of how they're feeling, you have to have walked in their shoes. And Fingers crossed you'll never have to do that. But in terms of, let's spin that around again, whether it's in a relationship and you're asking for somebody's advice and someone says, I know how you feel, or I've ever heard it between, I've been in different uh, sort of in places of work and different situations and you've heard that and people have almost sort of bitted one another up to think actually, oh yeah, I know how you feel. No, you can try to relate and you can try to put yourself in that person's situation, but you don't 100% know what goes on in that person's mind. You don't know 100% what goes on in that person's household or what's going on in their heart. You don't know how that person's feeling. Very often we can be speaking to somebody and they can share something. They can choose with all their might that they've wanted today to share share something with you. Number one, that other person, it would be really great in an ideal world that actually a spark goes up in their mind and they think, actually, do you know what? Wow, this person amazingly has chosen to share something with me. So this is all the steps which go through in my mind. And I just wonder with other people how this works. So if somebody's ever chosen to share something with me, number one, the first thought is amazing. I'm doing something right because somebody feels they can come to me. I love that. I didn't get that from the recent experiences which I chose to share with a couple of people at work, what I've been going through and how I've been feeling. Do you know, sometimes we need that. As human beings, we need that socialization. We need that connection that actually, do you know what, I'm not okay. And actually standing up and saying I'm not okay is actually a positive thing. And it's just sometimes that how people are People can't help how they're wired, but they can help that initial reaction. So for me, when somebody says, I know how you feel, for me, that's almost like somebody saying, I really haven't got time to speak to you right now about it, but I know how you feel, you're gonna be okay, move on. So for me, it's almost like that you've, you've cut down on that situation, you've cut down on my conversation, you've pushed me back, but yet I've chose to open up, and yet actually, no, I'm just not gonna go there again. So that's happened in the last couple of weeks to me. So I'm thinking actually now, do you know the person who I thought that I could confide in, talk to, is actually only just interested in work and actually isn't really there. So going back to the first thing if somebody comes to me, I think, wow, do you know what? I'm doing something right. Some This is amazing. Somebody feels they can confide in me. So number one, huge, huge positive there. Absolutely love that, that somebody all the time, any time of the day can come and chat with me about anything. And I will try my best to make time. It may not always be possible. And that's important to set that ground that I may not always be able to talk to you, but I will come back to you. And that's really, really important. And that's not an empty promise. That is a promise from here to me. And people who I work with, I hope know that because I say it, I say it often. And people in my team at work, um, family, I'm always there, always there, whatever time of the day. I've been there in the early hours of the morning. I've been there when my brother, unfortunately, has had accidents um, through his job. I've been there throughout all of my family. Um, and it's just sometimes it would be really nice that actually when you come outside of the wall of your family, that actually we see these values in society and people who we think are friends and acquaintances. So going back to that analogy for the third time, and we keep coming off course, but I, that's what goes through my head. And then I take the time to really understand. The first thing I don't do is say, I understand in terms of, I know how you feel. Two very, very different things. So first of all, I listen. Because the huge tool we all have is that ability to listen when somebody makes that decision. And that huge mountain to climb to actually think, do you know what? I'm going to share that with somebody. I'm going to try to help myself with how I'm feeling. I'm going to hope that that person reciprocates that energy and actually wants to genuinely listen. So that's the first tool. So if somebody says to you, I know how you feel, just 
kind of turn the lights down slowly on that conversation, move on. Because as much as they probably do not even realize they're doing it, that active ability of wanting to acknowledge, to listen, to care, to support, to relate just isn't there. It may be another day and at the end of the day you never know what that person's going through. So never be presumptuous, never judge, but just do not carry on with the conversation. So as I say, support and relate and try your best if you can. And once you're in that conversation, you'll know because the conversation will just flow. Somebody will be actively looking at you. They will be acknowledging how you're speaking, how you're talking and what you're going through. Now, a lot of people will probably be sat the opposite side of their screen thinking, actually, but I don't think that's an issue with saying that I know how you feel. For example, I looked after my grandmother with Alzheimer's. She is my absolute world. And to my heartbreak, I lost my nan on the 31st of May 2021. And still to this day, I find that incredibly difficult to deal with. And I have stronger points and I have points where the composure is just not there. And I have points where I'm just in floods of tears. My nan is with me always and she is with the Lord up above. And I know that she is looking down on me and I, and I like to think that I make her proud in how I live my life, in how I try to help others and how I try to install her teachings to me in all of my life. I'm blessed with my incredible mum and my incredible dad. My mum's mum is my nan who we're talking about now. So I've known heartbreak. I lost my aunt, who was my mum's sister. And I know everybody goes through something. Um, and my aunt was only 46. And you know what? That she had a horrific battle with cancer. And she, and she, left, uh, she left three children. Um, and I won't go into their circumstances, but everybody needs their mum, but they really needed their mum. And my aunt, I absolutely loved and adore. Um, and always will. But you know what? When I've spoken with my cousins, I have never once even gone down that avenue of knowing how they feel or even presuming what they feel. Because even now, 13 years on, the feelings and the emotions, I can't relate. And that's important sometimes to say, do you know what? I'm here for you and I can support you. I don't have to call you every single day. I don't have to be there every minute of the day but I'm right here for when you need it. But I have to be honest that I don't know how you feel, but I'm right here for you if you should need it. Turning that around, when I was going through, and still do, with feelings of loss and grief with my nan, when I went back to work, because at the same time I had uh, major surgery, um, but I was right there with my nan throughout the whole time, and I decided to share this with my workplace. I was very surprised with these are adult professional people who you would expect more of. And I'm not judging or saying that they were really, really bad, but the connection and the thought was just, my nan was older, it's happened, and then they would delve into the next item of conversation. But yeah, at the point, my heart was breaking and I was in a bad, in a real bad place in life. I'm, do you know, that's natural when you lose somebody who means the world to you. But yet, even the people who I thought I could talk to, very often it was almost like, and I did hear, I know how you feel because they'd lost a grandparent, they'd lost somebody precious to them. But yet, do you know what? I never really got what I needed from the people who I thought that I could speak to. So from that, from losing somebody very, very dear to me, but always with me, I always kind of told myself that actually I would act how I wanted people to act to me throughout the rest of my life. I always said to myself that when I seen such an incredible lady, my nan, go out of the world the way she did, that I wouldn't worry. I try not to worry. I try not to stress. I try not to be anxious because all of that, that doesn't add one second to our life. And I thought, but what I can do is I can spread kindness and I can spread goodness and I can be positive and I can help and I can make change and I can add to this fallen world we live in. So when somebody says to you, I know how you feel, just be mindful that that might just be the worst thing somebody wants to hear. Because what we need to do, the first thing is to listen. The next thing shortly after is to support, encourage, then after, relate. Following that, if you've done all of that, you're not expected to have the answer. You're not expected to walk in that person's shoes. 
but just out of human nature in consideration for others. Just give that person your time it can be the most powerful thing in the world. And I'm not saying you've been through probably something which is horrific or nasty. Even if you're not feeling great on a date, or perhaps you've been feeling under the weather. If somebody says, I know how you feel, I don't know your story. Everybody's story in this life is different. Everybody's busy writing their own books of life. Our life is like a book and everybody's busy writing theirs. Not many people sometimes are as considerate enough, sadly, in this world today to actually say, do you know what, I'm just going to put the bookmark in mine for a moment. And I'm going to listen to yours. Let's read yours. Let's see how you're dealing with things. How are you coping with things? No, they're quick enough to say, oh, I know how you feel. Done that chapter of my life. But no, you haven't because you're not me. As I say, you're amazing. There's only one of you in this world. And value yourself more. Listen to this sometimes a little bit more and try to spread goodness and spread kindness. And actually, nobody knows how you feel, but they can try to support and they can try to relate and they can try to spread positivity and goodness and all those great things. And they can try to relate to being where you are, but they won't be in the exact position you are. OK, on that note, I really hope that you've been able to take something away from that clip. It's something which I'm very passionate about. I am very motivated and encouraged by spreading that goodwill of being able to support one another and of being all equal. And actually, everybody is an individual. So somebody might be tasked because of something in life and two people will handle it very, very differently. And you know what? That is OK, because we are all individuals. And sometimes if we can't handle something, that is absolutely fine. But keep going. That's what you do next. And you know what? Every day is a blessing. And just get through. If, you, if you're finding it all too much, get through that day, first of all, and look back, evaluate that day and think, you know what? I done incredibly well. I got through that day. There is positivities in every element of what we stress about. Just taking one step at a time and staying strong, staying positive. For me, it's faith, which gets me through in the encouragement of my parents and my nan. And do what gets you through, because do you know what? Yes, when I say that nobody has promised us tomorrow, but do you know what? We are blessed with even in our darkest of times, the opportunity to be able to help, the opportunity to be able to spread kindness, the opportunity to be able to listen and to give time. And if you have nothing, you have something to give, which is time. On that note, my friend, God bless. Take great care. Thank you very much for sharing that. And until next time, I'll be seeing you real soon. Bye for now.